life-changing bit of learning I've gotten from Dr. Friedman. Depression is a lack of reinforcers and control. Wow, this is life-changing for us as humans and for us taking care of our dogs that look, what, behaviorally depressed as they get older? We want to make sure we keep their sense of agency alive, this capacity of individuals to act independently and make free choices. You've heard lots of talk this weekend at Clicker Expo about choice behavior and how much that's a component of mental health. We want our animals to have the ability to make choices, the sense of agency. So this accrued bank account of empowerment the stuff you've been doing throughout the dog's entire life can prepare for your dog's happy retirement. I hope we're preparing for retirement by building our bank accounts. Oh my gosh, we're trainers. No, we're not. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't just hope retirement's going to be good. We're trying to invest now to make our later years a little more comfortable. Well, to be able to say to our animals throughout their lives, you know what? We're going to create that sense of agency, maintain it you're gonna then have more for me to draw on when you're older. So with my senior dogs, with my clients who have senior dogs, I want them to use reinforcement to build or maintain the sense of the dog's engagement. I've been using the term, I like puns, eye drops, yes drops, little moments throughout the day when you say to your dog, yes, what are you marking and reinforcing? Any engagement, physical engagement with the environment, it can be tough for an older dog to move. It now hurts. There's a cost to moving. They're sore sometimes. They've got physical issues. So when they're physically choosing to move, I'm going to notice that, yay, you got up. I saw that. I'm reinforcing that. But they can also have mental or emotional engagement. This is not just about their bodies moving. It's about them checking in. So their eyes flick to you and they go, Hi, Mom, I'm looking up at you. I saw that. I saw that check-in. Yes, food. Or however you're reinforcing. These are subtle behaviors. So for a lot of us as trainers that have trained big, glorious, fancy behaviors we show off to each other, these are tiny movements of the dog saying, here I am, here I am, I'm still alive, still present, still moving. I'm noticing that, I'm scanning for those behaviors, I'm reinforcing them. But it takes a change in my attitude about what's reinforceable. So eye drops, little bits of yes throughout the day when you're in the same place. Uh, I can quote Susan Friedman the entire rest of the talk, we'll just do that. I sometimes want to say I could parrot her. <laughs> I know, all right. Uh, Susan would say, never waste the fact that you're in the house with your learner. You're in the house. You're in the office. You're outside with your senior dog. Pay attention to those moments where they opt in to life. Where's your power in doing this as a trainer, as a caregiver? Where it always is in linking consequences with behaviors? Remember, there's an illusion in our lives where we get sort of dissuaded to say it is in antecedents, it is in talking and cheerleading and coaching and jollying up, and I'm gonna be really animated, it's gonna make you really animated. It's a bit of an illusion, right? Where power is in providing contingencies, consequences of positive reinforcement when we catch the dog engaging, right? So I've been in this position. I, I'm, I'm being sort of, um, I'm trying to be in professional emotive mode here because I'm tired, and if I start sinking into the memories of my living with Effie and Nick, I'll be crying through the rest of the presentation. I'm gonna try to stay out of that. But I'm very empathetic with this dog who you adore, who's not as active, who's in the process of dying, they're, they're becoming less animate, and you want to go, come on, don't do this, come with me, I'm going to jolly you up. You can get in a trap with that, right? So bulking, where animals go, not doing what you just asked, I'm hunkered in, I'm not moving, that's actually fairly easy to train. Has anybody else inadvertently trained animals to bulk, to say, I'm not going with you? Like, I could, I could give a class in this, and that would be, you ask the animal to do something. You're giving a cue with your fingers crossed, typically. You're like, I think maybe they can, and I hope they can. Come. Come, sweetie. Oh, I guess I'll get the food and help you come. I'm just saying. You get the dog 